the year is 2563, three centuries after a devastating war known as the Fall. A doctor named Ito visits the scrapyard to pick up any good pieces he can use for his repairs and comes across a destroyed cyborg girl. He confirms her brain is still functioning and takes her home to give her a new body with the help of his assistant nurse. The next morning, the cyborg wakes up in a girl's room and is amazed by her new body. After admiring her new self in the mirror, she puts on clothes and goes downstairs, where Ito is taking care of other cyborg patients. Ito is glad to see her awake and offers some breakfast, where the girl reveals she can't remember how to eat a simple fruit. It turns out she has no memories from her previous life, and Ito hasn't found any records of her either. Afterward the girl goes outside to see Iron City for the first time. It's a lower class kind of place, and above them she notices Zalem, the last of the great sky cities where the elite lives. After the war, survivors came to live on Earth and all the work that is done here is for Zalem, but nobody is allowed to go up there. Ito gives the girl the name Alita and invites her to stay with him. Ito goes out to do some chores and takes Alita with him, giving her the chance to see a motorball match on a big screen and make friends with a street dog. Alita also finds a wanted sign looking with a bounty for a criminal that killed six women. At that moment, a huge robot appears in the middle of the street and Alita instinctively gets in a defensive position. A young man named Hugo immediately pushes her out of the way, but Alita goes back to save the dog. Hugo's impressed but still explains she shouldn't mess with centurions, who guard the city. The two youngsters hit it off but Ito interrupts them and brings Alita back home. Late at night, a woman tries to return to her apartment only to suddenly be attacked by the wanted murderer. Meanwhile Alita wakes up when she hears a noise and discovers Ito coming home too late, carrying a huge suitcase and a bloodstain on his hand. The next day, Alita begins helping Ito with the patients and learns that a man had his cyborg limbs stolen by jackers, who sell them in the black market that supports motorball games. She also hears another woman got killed last night, and she can't help getting suspicious of Ito and his wrist wound. After work, Alita goes out and bumps into Chirin, a mysterious woman with a mark on her forehead. Chirin grabs Alita's hand, freaking her out and causing her to run. Then Chirin meets with Ito, revealing that they used to be married and that Ito used the cyborg body they had made for their dead daughter to repair Alita. Chirin wants to work with Ito again to build a motorball champion that could buy her away to Zalem, but Ito refuses to build monsters. Then Chirin leaves, and Ito notices her getting in a car with Vector, the man behind the factory. Meanwhile Alita meets with Hugo, who is playing motorball with Tanji and other friends. He accepts to teach her how to play and lends her a pair of roller skates, so Alita has to get used to moving in them. After falling a few times, she gets the hang of it and manages to score a good amount of points. After the match is over, Hugo takes Alita to try chocolate for the first time and they notice Zappin passing by. He's a hunter warrior that carries a sword around because guns are forbidden down here. The following days, Alita continues to work with Ito in the morning and hang out with Hugo in the afternoon. Hugo takes Alita to a very high building to have a great look at Zalem, and he confesses his dream is to get up there someday. He also points out that the scrapyard is full of trash thrown by Zalem, so if Ito found Alita there, then she originally comes from the Sky City. In the evening, Alita pretends to go to bed and waits for Ito to leave to follow him. She finds him stalking a woman named Nisiana into a dark alley and getting a scythe-shaped weapon out of his suitcase. Thinking he's about to kill Nisiana, Alita tries to stop him and gives away their location. It turns out that Ito is a hunter warrior that goes after bad guys for their bounties, and this is a trap set by Gruishka. Nisiana and Romo are his subordinates, and the three of them are cyborgs with very advanced parts. Ito attacks Romo and gets his arm, but Romo teams up with Nisiana and overpowers him. Desperate to help, Alita jumps in and begins beating Romo up incredibly easily, almost as if she had been built for it. While Gruishka keeps Ito from joining, Alita goes after Nisiana next and easily kills her too. Gruishka can't believe what he's seeing and fights Alita as well. As Alita pulls a special kick to attack, a flashback comes to her mind and she suddenly sees herself wearing special armor on the moon. She's in the middle of a fierce battle and a woman named Gelda calls her 99. Back in the present, Alita uses the kick to get Gruishka's arm off, then tries attacking him with Ito's scythe causing Gruishka to escape through a hole in the ground. Afterward, Ito stops by the Hunter Warrior's headquarters to hand in Nisiana and get the reward, which allows him to keep the clinic up and help people. Alita tells Ito about her memory and demands to know more, so Ito takes her home and explains he had made that body for his daughter Alita, who had been wheelchair-bound. One day, an addicted patient entered the clinic looking for the medicine he could use as an upper before a motorball match and when he found nothing, he killed Alita. Chirin couldn't deal with the death of her daughter and left. Ito wanted revenge and went looking for the guy to kill him, which made him realize he was good at this and caused him to become a hunter warrior. Ito gave Alita the body he built, but her brain and her core are the original ones, and the core is powered by an antimatter micro-reactor, meaning she could power the whole city on her own. This technology hasn't been made since before the fall, which makes Alita over 300 years old. Meanwhile Gruishka goes back to Chirin and tells her about Alita's skills. Chirin accepts to repair him and Vector comes for an interrogation, 
but Grushka suddenly changes personality. It turns out that Zalem's overlord Nova can communicate with people on Earth through any cyborg he decides to hack into. Nova explains Alita knows the fighting techniques of Panzerkunst, so he orders Chirin to rebuild Gruishka and send him to kill Alita. Then Nova takes over Vector and offers Chirin to send her to Zalem if she accepts to work for him. Later, Ito searches the list of bounties and discovers Gruishka isn't there, which means someone is protecting him. Alita wants to become a hunter-warrior too, but Ito forbids it. Furious, Alita runs away and meets with Hugo, who takes her to a motorball match. After watching all the players fight fiercely, Hugo uses his contacts to show Alita behind the scenes, explaining that a motorball champion gets to go to Zalem as a prize. Alita notices Chirin and Vector are around since they build cyborgs specifically for motorball. The guy currently winning isn't one of theirs and Chirin asks Vector to get her his parts. Moments later, the winner is celebrating his victory when he's suddenly attacked by a group of jackers that capture him in a ring of fire. Then they put him in the back of a van and take his arms, which Vector comes to buy for Chirin. At that moment it's revealed that the jackers are Hugo and his friends, who do this for the money. Vector asks them to deliver the arms while he kills what's left of the winner. The next day, Hugo and his friends take Alita to see the beautiful natural view outside the city. In a lake, there's a ship that fell during the war. Some scrappers took various parts but it was mostly left alone because it's technology made by the enemy, the United Republics of Mars. Hugo thinks this may help Alita recover her memories, so she doesn't hesitate to get into the lake, where she has no trouble breathing. By walking underwater, she manages to enter the ship where she opens a strange door that takes her to a mysterious force field. Somehow recognizing all this, Alita summons the control panel and shuts down the shield, revealing an advanced armored body that Alita takes with her. When she gets home, Alita asks Ito to give her this body because she feels a special connection to it, but Ito refuses. He explains this body is known as a berserker, a weaponized cyborg that knew the techniques of Panzerkunst. The ship reacted to Alita's core because she was created as a weapon, and Ito doesn't want her to be a weapon again, he thinks it's better for her to have a chance at a normal life. Ignoring Ito's worries, Alita goes to the headquarters to register as a hunter-warrior. Then she asks Hugo to take her to the bar where hunter-warriors hang out. The dog from the other day sees them and decides to come along. In the bar, Zappin teases Alita for being a little girl and introduces her to the power of the other warriors, like McTeague and his cyborg hounds. Alita ignores his taunting and talks to everyone in the bar, asking them to team up so they can hunt Gruishka together and overpower whoever is protecting him. Everyone finds the idea laughable, and Zappin makes fun of Alita for it. Alita insults him back and causes Zappin to attack her, but Alita easily beats him up. Afterward, Alita calls everyone pathetic and offers a deal, if she defeats them, then they must agree to team up. A bar fight immediately ensues, and an amused McTeague watches how Alita kicks everyone's butts without trouble, although Hugo helps as well. Ito arrives and makes everyone stop by threatening them with charging for his repairs. As Ito scolds Alita for her choices, Gruishka shows up and kills a man to show off his upgrades. Gruishka asks for Alita and the dog comes to her defense, but Gruishka kills it. Furious, Alita paints warrior marks on her face with the dog's blood and begins fighting Gruishka. Ito wants to help, but Hugo quickly pushes him away. Gruishka makes a hole in the ground to fight Alita in the ruins of the old world. Alita continues to fight spectacularly, although this time Gruishka's upgrades allow him to wound her leg. Gruishka tells her that she was made by Nova just like him, putting Alita in a bad emotional state. The next time Gruishka attacks, Alita fails to dodge it and loses most of her body. This triggers a memory of Gelda teaching Alita how to fight. She reminded her to never give up because they needed to defeat Nova soon. Encouraged by Gelda's words, Alita uses her remaining arm to make her body bounce and punch Gruishka through his eye socket. Then she falls on the ground just in time for Ito and Hugo to arrive and attack Gruishka too. McTeague comes as well and sends his cyborg hounds to get revenge for the dead dog, scaring Gruishka into running away. Ito takes what is left of Alita home and repairs her by giving her the berserker body, which immediately adjusts to its new host. The next morning, Alita is feeling stronger than ever and discovers her fingers can make plasma. Afterward, Alita meets with Hugo and tells him this nanotech makes her texture sensors a lot more touch sensitive. Hugo touches Alita's arms and face so she can experience actual human contact, then the two of them kiss. Meanwhile Gruishka is throwing a tantrum over his loss, so Nova takes over Vector's body to scold Gruishka and remind him of his mission. Once Nova is gone, Vector decides he can't trust Gruishka with such an important mission and decides to meet with Hugo to get her to talk about Alita by getting him drunk. The next day, Alita finds Hugo in his apartment suffering from a hangover. They talk about Hugo's dream of reaching Zalem and Alita offers to give him the money she gets bounties to buy a ticket from Vector. Hugo doesn't want her to get in danger again, and Alita explains she'd do anything for him, including giving him her heart. In fact she removes it from her chest to prove her point, but Hugo turns it down and informs her that Vector wants to see Alita play motorball. Alita accepts if Hugo becomes her coach, that way they could go to Zalem together if she wins. All this is seen by Zappin from afar. The night of Alita's first big game, 
Ito gives her extra pot traction and custom-made skate feet. Alita chooses the number 99 in honor of her memories while Vector contacts the other players to offer a huge reward to whoever kills Alita during the match. On the streets, Hugo finds Tanji and the others getting parts from a cyborg. He announces he wants to quit this business, which triggers a fight between him and Tanji. They're suddenly interrupted by Zappin, who kills the Jack cyborg to make it look like the Jackers did it, then he attacks Hugo and wounds his shoulder. Tanji tries to rescue his friend, but Zappin easily kills him with his sword. Hugo takes the chance to distract Zappin with a Molotov bomb and runs away, only for Zappin to chase after him. At the stadium, Vector tells Chiran that he made Hugo bring Alita to them by promising to take him to Zalem. Ito realizes Alita's opponents aren't normal players, they're all bounty markers or hunter warriors, which means this is a trap. He calls Alita through the communicator on her system to warn her, but Alita stays to fight. These guys are tough and manage to land a few hits on her, but Alita is still far superior and easily beats them all up. Suddenly, Alita gets a call from Hugo, who tells her he needs help to defeat Zappin. Alita wastes no time and jumps through the stadium's big screen to leave the building, and the other players follow her. With more room to move, Alita has no trouble beating them all up and goes to find Hugo, who is about to be killed by Zappin. Alita immediately pushes Zappin away, but at that moment, the bounty screens show that Hugo is wanted for murder. Hugo admits he was a jacker, but also explains he only took the parts without killing. Zappin reminds Alita of the hunter's code. But since Alita can't bring herself to kill the man she loves, Zappin stabs Hugo first. A centurion shows up to ask for Hugo's body, so Alita picks him up and runs away with him. In a secret spot, Hugo swears he didn't kill anyone and that he quit his job for Alita, the two of them kiss and confess their love for each other. Chirin watches all this from afar and she's so touched by their relationship that when Vector calls her, she tells him she lost track of Alita and Hugo. Then she offers her help to them to help the boy survive. Moments later, Alita comes out with Hugo's head in her arms. The Centurion accepts this as Alita having finished the bounty, but Zappin takes a closer look and discovers Chiran has connected Hugo's brain to Alita's core. Furious, Zappin tries to attack Alita, but fighting other hunters is a violation code and the Centurion classifies Zappin as a criminal now. This allows Alita to destroy Zappin's face and take his sword. Hours later, Ito has finished giving Hugo a new body, even if it's rather rudimentary. Ito explains to Alita that Vector's promises were fake, and the only way to go to Zalem is by becoming champion. He knows because he and Chiran are from Zalem, they were forced to come here by Nova when he saw their daughter was imperfect. Ito removed the mark from his forehead to leave that life behind. Meanwhile Vector confronts Chiran for letting Alita go. Chiran explains Alita reminded her of her duties as a doctor and a mother, so she wants to quit because she doesn't care about Zalem anymore. Vector has no choice but to send a guard after her. Determined to get revenge for Hugo, Alita goes to the Hunter Warriors headquarters, which is located in the Cyborg Factory building. Using Zappin's sword, Alita destroys all the Centurions and the bounty system before bursting into Vector's office, where she discovers Vector's taken Chiran's body parts to sell them later. She's so distracted that she doesn't hear Gruishka arrive and she gets hurt on her hip, which triggers another flashback. During the war, Alita, Gelda, and their team tried to reach Zalem by climbing the cargo tubes. A serrated defense ring appeared on the tub and killed the army, leaving only Alita and Gelda behind before it broke the tube in two. Alita barely managed to hang on the edge and Gelda helped her back up as she reminded her the mission was to destroy Zalem. With Gelda's words as inspiration, Alita reminds her body it can heal herself, then she kills Gruishka with just a couple of moves. Afterward Alita demands to speak to Nova, and the Overlord takes over Vector's body to respond. He reminds Alita that he can see everything and threatens with killing Ito and Hugo, causing a furious Alita to kill Vector to shut him up. At that moment, Ito calls Alita to inform her Hugo had to run away because Centurions are after him. Alita searches for her boyfriend and finds him climbing the tube to reach his dream. No matter how much Alita explains that Nova is using him to get to her, Hugo doesn't listen, and Nova takes the chance to drop a serrated ring on them. Alita manages to dodge it, but Hugo is hit and he loses most of his body. With a quick jump, Alita grabs Hugo's hand to stop him from falling, but Hugo's arm is slowly coming apart. The couple shares their love one last time before the arm breaks and Hugo falls to his death. Months later, Alita has become a motorball superstar. During a match, she raises her sword to point at Zalem as a promise to become champion and find Nova to get her revenge.